Um, I am now happy to introduce uh, Professor Louise Ranford. So since 2009, Professor Louise Ranford has been the head of radiograph radiography and diagnostic imaging within the UCD School of Medicine. And in 2016, she was appointed the Associate Dean for Radiography. She holds awards for teaching excellence and she is currently focused on embedding clinical simulation into radiography uh, curricula. And um, thanks very much, Louise. You're very welcome. Okay. <clears throat> thank you for the introduction and thank you, everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be able to talk about our experience and how we embedded uh, virtual reality into our curriculum. So this is a very brief, quick overview of what... Uh, Uh, Louise, uh, just to say, I think you might be muted at the moment. Uh, I, certainly on my side. Oh, sorry. Was, you're back. Good to hear you again. I'm back. Uh, sorry, I, I was off mute. Uh, sorry. Um, sorry. OK, so um, I'll continue from this slide. I'm not sure if you could hear me on the first one, but I'm going to talk about how we embedded virtual reality geography practice into our curriculum and what we did we looked at how we could use 3D and 2D virtual reality uh, to improve uh, student competency levels to improve their skill sets and to also give a different type of opportunity when it came to practical training so these are our virtual reality suites we we, we had uh, two existing suites and uh, 2018-19 onwards, we increased that to six virtual reality bays. Uh, we'd started earlier using virtual reality and we, we applied for funding from the National Forum and we were, ve we were grateful to be successful and it allowed us to build these uh, four additional uh, virtual reality bays, which you can see here as shared bays. Uh, we also were able to purchase new equipment. Uh, we have 20 radiography students in each year group so to allow them to have the virtual reality experience we needed more facilities and more space uh, as well as the radiography software we purchased additional software where we could look at radiation protection uh, learning so this is um, a, a picture of the students in the group um, in, in the actual virtual reality base. And these are the modules that we uh, embedded virtual reality within. So we had didactic teaching. They have clinical experience within clinical departments. Uh, they're also, they also have experience in an X-ray. Now they have experience in 3D and 2D virtual reality when it comes to training as a radiographer. Um, so we have modules in semester one for our first year students and modules in semester two for first year, which we've now embedded our, our virtual reality into. Um, we also uh, developed a um, support uh, videos for students using our virtual reality, how to use the controls when in the room, when in the virtual space, but also for the 2D version, which they could download onto their laptops. So they could use the 2D version home at any point, and they could then they use the 3D version when they're in UCD. And this was particularly useful during the COVID pandemic, uh, because we could use the 2D version from the start of the COVID pandemic, and it meant the students could keep learning um, at home um, when not on campus. So this is just it running. And one of the students actually developed that with us. He was responsible for developing that as part of the summer research uh, programme. So what we found, the difference is, well, the advantages of using 2D and VR. The advantages of using our TD, 2D version, which isn't fully immersive, which the students can go into an X-ray room on their laptop and they can X-ray patients and they get a report on how well they're doing. We found that very flexible um, and it's certainly, they could practice and practice and practice. Um, but the disadvantages of it is uh, it wasn't quite as just to say Louise we... and 70, 70 sorry I was just going to say we lost your sound again but you're back again thank you 
Okay. Yeah. I've no, I, sorry. I have no idea why. Preparedness of the for clinical placement. Seventy-two percent felt better prepared for clinical placement when we surveyed them uh, after they'd used the VR. Sorry, just go back to that. But overall, the students preferred using the 3D VR suite because it meant that they were in the uh, on campus, they were meeting each other during COVID, and um, so they were working in groups, which was probably one of the reasons, maybe, and it was also more immersive for them. Um, but uh, overall, there was a huge um, student uh, satisfaction level with both 2D and v, uh, uh, 3D VR. Um, but their preference was always for the 3D version. Um, staff um, also gave uh, feedback on the assessments that we used with the students, and so did the students. They gave feedback on the rubrics that we used for assessment purposes, and um, it was a very positive feedback that we got back from the students. And of all our students, 80% of them would like more time in our VR suite. But obviously, because of the amount of students and the time it takes, there's only so much time that they can have within the 3D VR suite. Um, so, as I said, the students felt more confident in what they were doing after they'd used the 3D and uh, VR uh, software. And now we have a rubric that we were quite willing to share, and that's embedded within the students' virtual learning environment. We have to, obviously, we take surveys, we take surveys at the end of each semester to see how cohorts of students are finding our 3D VR. We've written one paper that's in radiography for more coming out about our experience with the 2D and 3D VR. Um, so as I said, we've developed our assessment rubric, our assessment methods for using 2D and 3D VR. Um, in the first year when we first embedded our, uh, our, 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 uh, our activities, there was nearly 1,500 images were reviewed as part of the assessment mechanism, which was a, a lot of uh, assessment for the staff. And we have a whole team that works with the virtual reality space. So we would have a team of approximately eight lecturers that work with the students while they're going through the, um, the uh, different practice modules. And as I said, we've got feedback from the previous years and we're gaining feedback from this year as well. Um, so that's the radiography software. We also have another type of software. It's for radiation protection, and the video is playing here. We're looking staff members in as they would be in a clinical department, and the areas that you can see where there's a plane of uh, green light, red light, and yellow light. This is showing the areas where there's different levels of radioactivity, radiation within the room as the procedure is going forward. This is a very, very good visual aid for students and they can move the people around, they can move the equipment around, they can move themselves around and it calculates their dose and everybody else's dose as they're moving around the room. And a number of speakers have talked about the use of virtual reality for something that you can't see, so it's very hard to understand. And for visual learners, this is perfect because for the first time you can see where the radiation field is. So you know whether you're actually working well, reducing the radiation, whether you're standing in the radiation field or not. And for visual learners, it's, it, it keeps in your mind. And the students would say, once they've seen it, they won't really forget it. And they know exactly where the radiation is. This is another piece of software that we've used and are using, we've embedded it into our final year uh, radiography degree program, and we've also tested it out on medical students. And we've used it in different ways, both uh, the fully immersive with the students in the room uh, with the VR headsets on, and also in small group work via in the room moving around. And both have been very successful. So, so what we found when we, uh, started to use uh, 3D and 2D VR, um, we had to develop our, our teachers. Um, we obviously had to look at the way we assessed and how we graded virtual activity um, on an individual basis for students. 
we had to make sure that staff are competent in the use of the VR technology because there are many issues that can arise um, using the uh, VR technology. And uh, we wanted to merge these technologies so um, they got a really good uh, 3D immersion and it linked in with other aspects of teaching on the, on the modules. We've also disseminated our, our findings to different disciplines because we see that there's, there's opportunity for great collaboration with medical students, nursing students and with medical physics. Um, and so, so far we have embedded and we continually use 3D and 2D VR uh, training for radiography. Uh, we're using it for radiation safety training as well. And we're continually measuring how it's impacting on the student learning and learning from it. Um, and so we're glad to be able to talk about it today. Um, as I said, there's a very large academic team involved in this and the students have been great as well. Um, uh, participating in all the different aspects of what we've been through. Um, the National Forum funding was to us. This is my colleague, Dr. John Stowe. He was fundamental in, in bringing VR to um, our, our section within the School of Medicine. And the first speaker spoke about the challenges of overcoming um, barriers where people may not be as used to uh, radio to virtual reality teaching and that's very very true and Dr John Stowe was absolutely dedicated to moving teaching forwards he passed away very suddenly last July and has been a terrible loss to our team but it's for him that we uh, we carry on with his spirit of um, great foresight and he was delighted to hear the, the some of these comments that we got back from students uh, expressing how much they enjoyed the virtual reality experience. And for students who learn in many, many different ways, be a visual learner, a student who, who learns better in uh, the classroom or from reading um, notes, etc., we found that this way we're, we're reaching out to a greater, broader um, array of different learners. And the feedback's only positive, really. Um, and so we're delighted with the comments that we're getting back and we carrying on and hopefully we'll be able to collaborate more with different disciplines in the future. This is my email address and we're always happy to discuss uh, options for the future. And thank you for your time and thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much, um, Louise. I'm sure everyone would agree that was fascinating. Thank you. Thank you for your time.